Okay, in this segment, uh, we're continuing on looking at uh, transient solutions, uh, convective boundary, and we're going to be looking at an infinite cylinder. And so we're looking at approximate solutions as well as a graphical solution using the Heisler charts. So let's begin with the approximate solutions. So this is the infinite cylinder. Sketching out the geometry, remember we had R0 is the outer radius and we're interested in what's going on at some radial location and we're assuming that this cylinder goes off to infinity. Uh, beginning with the approximate solutions, so we have the center line temperature. And whenever you're working transient problems, you always got to start with the center line. If you're wanting something spatially, you start with the center line, you get that, and then you move to your spatial temperature. Uh, as well as for heat loss, you need to know the center line temperature. So let's take a look at that. Uh, using our theta designation, it's theta naught star. And that is going to be theta naught divided by theta i. And defining what those are. Center line temperature minus T infinity divided by the initial temperature of the entire cylinder divided by minus T infinity. Uh, and the solution here, just like we saw for the slab, is going to look like this. That is zeta and then the Fourier number, Fourier number. very important non-dimensional number in transient conduction analysis. Now our length scale you'll notice before when we had the slab it was L squared now we're dividing by R naught squared and the bio number H times the characteristic length scale which is the outer radius for the cylinder divided by the thermal conductivity of the cylinder. Now C1 and zeta where are you going to get those from? Well you get them from a table and they will be as a function of the bio number and those are listed in a table. Okay, so that is how you can evaluate the center line temperature. Let's take a look at spatial temperature variability. And you'll notice that this is quite similar to what we saw for the slab, but there are slight differences in the equations, so just be careful with that. Uh, so spatial temperature, theta star, theta over theta i. And that's going to be the temperature at our radial location and specific time, the radial location that we're interested in that's off the center line, minus T infinity divided by the initial temperature minus T infinity. And that is going to equal the center line temperature, so the uh, theta naught star that we just calculated in the previous part, or I showed you the equation. And then this is where you get the fun bezel functions. So that's bezel function of a first kind times zeta r star. Where do you get the bezel functions? Well, there should be a table in your book. If not, search it out on the internet. I'm sure you'll find them. Bezel functions of the first kind. And then R star, what is R star? That's our non-dimensionalized radius. So that's going to be R divided by R naught. So that's spatial temperature. You'll notice you have to evaluate uh, what's going on at the center line first before you can get what is going on there. And this is what you'd be looking for in that equation. Uh, let's take a look at heat loss. Heat loss is Q divided by Q naught, and I'll give you Q naught in a second. Again, this is a bezel function. 
evaluated at zeta 1 and Q naught that is the total heat loss that would occur if your solid your cylinder was to go all the way from T and original TI all the way to T infinity T free stream now we say heat loss you can have cases where the object is getting hotter uh, so just be aware of that uh, sometimes T infinity can be larger than the initial temperature that we're looking at so it doesn't always have to be heat loss it can sometimes be heat gain uh, so that is the approximate let's take a look at the Heisler Heisler charts that's the graphical technique and this is quite similar to what we saw for the slab first of all we start with our center line and you'll have a plot of theta naught that is at the center line divided by theta initial and that's going to be plotted as a function of the Fourier number and you'll have these interesting curves that have breakpoints and that is one over the bio. I'll show you these in an example problem in the next lecture. So if you're wondering what do these look like. Spatial. You have to do your center line first. And once you've done your center line, then you can do the spatial. And that's plotted as a function of 1 over the bio number. And here we're going to have curves like that, and they are in order of increasing radial location. So as you go out towards the uh, outer radius of your sphere. And then finally, heat loss. There will be curves for heat loss. And these are Q over Q naught. Again, plotted as a function of Fourier bio squared. And these curves are plotted for different bio numbers. So those are the curves that pertain to the cylinder for the Heisler charts. And very similar to what we saw for this lab. The only difference is that you're using R0 for your characteristic dimension, whereas before we were using L. Okay, so that is the cylinder. The next segment, we'll look at the equations for a sphere. And that will uh, give us all the equations that we can use for convective boundary conditions.